When it comes to the conclusion of Love of Kill or Kuroshi Ai, I really, I don't know. This is a series that are one of the few cases of shows where when I finish it, I really don't know if I love it or if I hate it. But this is my review of Love of Kill, a series that aired in the winter 2022 anime season. So let's jump right into it. Love of Kill opens up with the meeting of two people. Rang Ha Song, who is this very well-known assassin, and Chateau, who is a bounty hunter. And after the two of them meet, Rang Ha Song becomes very interested in Chateau. Enough that after he pretty much disarms her, he asks her a bunch of questions about herself, hitting heavily on the idea that, you know, look, I'm asking these questions because I'm interested in you. It seems like love at first sight for Song, but unfortunately on the other end, <laughs> Chateau is not very interested in this guy and in fact wants to take him down. And what follows this very interesting fateful encounter is Chateau working as a bounty hunter while at the same time being pursued by this very famous assassin, Song. Even having some point where Chateau is even hired to actually take down Song. It sort of turns into a twisted game of cat and mouse as Song is constantly trying to get the attention of Chateau, even going so far as helping her with some of her her targets, even in some cases taking hostages in order to get her to go on a date with him. It's, it's a very twisted relationship that's sort of being formed the entire time Chateau just doesn't really want to have anything to do with Song. And eventually getting into some sort of tie-ins that Song has with some very shady groups that eventually puts Chateau's life in danger. So my thoughts on Love of Kill, like I kind of alluded to at the very beginning, I really don't know what I think of this show. I know early on I was very much so captivated by the fact that this was going to be a romance story that was very violent. A lot of the things going on around these characters is a lot of death. It's a lot of murder. Again, technically Song is an assassin. Song doesn't really have the sort of normal human reaction to death. He just, he can stand around a bloody pool of bodies talking to Chateau on the phone very casually. He's a very warped mind person. And when you have that sort of guy meets girl scenario where the guy is sort of twisted in a way, it sort of becomes very uncomfortable when you see their interactions between the two of them. Very early on, it's really this desire for Chateau to get the hell away from this guy because he's obviously very overbearing. He's very forceful around her. It sort of gives you a feeling of almost a very one-sided relationship that's almost too forced. But I sort of kept with it because I had this kind of side of me that believed that at some point they were going to connect the two of them. That they were going to sort of explain why I should care about the two of these being together. And I think ultimately you do get that decision. As early on in the aftercast, you would see these scenes where the two of them have some sort of connection in the past. And seeing how that connection happens is ultimately the interesting thing in the story itself. All the while having them get wrapped up in a lot of cases where people want Song dead, Chateau's being dragged into these situations, and ultimately seeing how that all gets resolved in the end was the interesting aspect of the story. It's one of those cases where a lot of people were like, I dropped this early on because I didn't like how overbearing Song was with Chateau. And I understood that because I felt the same way early on. But again, the driving force for me to continue watching it was to see how these two are connected and why I should care about them being together. Which I think in the end, I mixed on that connection. I mixed on how I feel about that connection. Why Song is so fascinated and so drawn to Chateau is answered, but I don't know that I feel like it's enough. Like I almost feel like that's not enough for me to understand why he's so driven. It's convenient. It's sort of a stretch in a way. But despite that, I felt like I liked their connection in the end. I liked the resolve. Even though the journey itself has these little pitfalls that really frustrated me. This writer likes to play off of fake outs and they do it a lot. And I got growingly frustrated by that. And yes, I almost was frustrated by just how useless Chateau was most of the time. It's, it almost plays too heavily on the idea of Song saving Chateau. Even times where I felt like Chateau was going to shine, in the end it was just her stumbling and him having to come in and pick her up. Now I'm not bothered by the typical damsel in distress concept, I just felt like I wanted to have Chateau have that moment where she does something cool. But again, again, they didn't really ever sell us on the idea that Chateau was some sort of secret agent with some crazy training. She's just a normal person doing these bounty jobs. But you would think that she would have some sort of training? Which just all leads me to probably my biggest issue with this show in general, as I think that a lot of the overarching plot lines outside of Ryong Hong Song and Chateau were incomplete. <laughs> we get very little on all this stuff that's manipulating the two of them. Again, Song has this past dealing with sort of this mafia group. And there's even this one bigger group that they introduce at some point that is ultimately in the end putting some of these characters into danger 
and it just stops. The ending has zero ending to it. The ending feels very unfinished. The show goes out of its way to show you things that ultimately leave it on a cliffhanger. People put in danger and you don't wanna know what's gonna happen to them. And it kinda leaves a bitter taste in my mouth. But this, of course, could get a second season, but as it stands now, it feels very baity towards the manga itself. So in the end, again, like I said, I don't know. I really don't know. I did enjoy the show. I thought it was very gritty. I thought I liked the fact that it was very violent. It didn't really hold too much back. I was very frustrated like many people on Song and Chateau's relationship early on, but I do feel a little fulfilled on how they explained sort of their connection in the later parts, ultimately creating sort of a bond between the two of them that I was sort of interested in. It was a very different take on your typical romance. This is not a fluffy story. This is not cutesy. This is not doki dokies. This is all about desire and fulfillment between the two of them that yes, many people are not gonna really enjoy. It's not a healthy romance, I don't think. I don't think it's meant to be a healthy romance, but it was an interesting romance in the end. A unique romance that I actually really enjoyed. It's just really all the stuff around that that I think is both unfulfilled and filled with a lot of fake outs. So yeah, if any of that sounds into you, definitely check it out. It's definitely an interesting ride in the end. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like down below, comment. Let me know what's all this series, if you checked it out or if you're going to be checking it out. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share this video if you can. Support us on Patreon. I'll throw a tips link in the description below. We also have a merch link there as well. We definitely appreciate everybody that supports us and y'all take care.